These are five tips for using Microsoft Loop components for project collaboration. So let's nerd out. There are a couple of ways that we can create a loop component directly within the Loop app. So here we have a loop page. And if we go up to this little copy as loop component icon on the top right hand side, and we'll see that a link has been copied. Then we can share that link across any of our other 365 apps. So for example, an email. When we paste that link into this email, we will see that it has automatically embedded the entire Microsoft Loop page into this email. Now with email specifically, on the right hand side, you might see this convert to embedded loop, which is what we already have, or you can convert this to a link. Sometimes these disappear. So then instead we can select this name and then we will see link styles. So we'll see right now that we are embedded, but we can also turn this into a link to make it a bit shorter in that email. I personally like to leave this as an embedded loop component and we'll see why in just a second. We will send this email to Mike. With Mike's email side by side, we can see how we can collaborate with our team and everything will update in real time. Loop also clearly indicates where new changes have been made by other team members. Now, instead of taking a copy of a loop component and pasting it into an email, we can use the at sign to tag our team members directly within the loop page. And we'll just ask Mike to elaborate on this marketing objectives below. This will automatically send an email to your team member, letting them know that you have mentioned them and then embed that loop page as a loop component into the email. And we can see where we have tagged Mike there. Mike will also receive notifications via Microsoft Loop and we will see that I have mentioned him again there. Similarly, we can comment on specific areas within that loop page. So let's highlight this marketing strategies. We will go up to comment. And once again, I will press the at sign to tag Mike. And I will ask him if I have missed anything. And the great thing that I like about comments is that once again, we have that loop component page embedded in the email and Mike can respond directly to this comment without even leaving his inbox. And as long as he tags me in his response, then I will also be notified. So far, we have looked at sharing an entire loop page as a loop component. But if we want to just share this table of contents, for example, then you could select all of it or just select this little grid icon and go create loop component. So here we can see a loop component has been created. We can then copy that and share it in other 365 apps. Microsoft Loop is compatible with most apps. So for example, in OneNote, we can paste that loop component that we just created and embed it directly into our OneNote page. Alternatively, we can go up to insert, loop components, and then here we will have a drop down list of some items such as a checklist. Now, I wanted to know that what you select here is not what you are limited to. And right now I am working on a piece of code. So if we insert that, then we will see that a loop component for code has been embedded. And we will see that we are redirected to a title. So I will call this the dog training app code. And now what I mean by we aren't limited to this code is that if we press forward slash, then we can see that we can add to this loop component. So we can also insert different items such as a checklist into this loop component. So we'll see that there is that code snippet down below as well. And if we go and copy this, then we can also paste it into another 365 app, such as a Teams chat. So we can see that that loop component has been pasted. And now if I send this to Mike, then Mike and I can collaborate in the Teams chat on this code and we can watch it update in OneNote in the back end in real time. We can insert loop components directly into other apps, such as an email. Now for an email, I just recommend inserting the subject before you add the loop component. And then to add the loop component, you need to be in the body of the email. 
Then on the ribbon, we can go up to this collaborate for project collaboration, and we can insert a loop component. Now this time I want to insert a table. Now the reason why I recommend inserting your subject before you add the loop component is because this title of this loop component here has now inherited the subject of your email. So this will help you with searchability of your loop components, which we will dive into in a little bit. And then here we have our table filled out and I can send this to Mike and we can start to collaborate. We have a similar experience within the Teams chat. We can select this loop component icon here. Now, because this doesn't have a subject to it, you are going to want to add a descriptive title here. And when we send that, we will see that the loop component has now updated to that title that we just gave it, which will add to that searchability factor. We have a similar experience within a Teams post where we can add loop components there. We have a similar experience within whiteboard. At the bottom menu, we can select the ellipses and then go loop components. And then here we can add a progress tracker. And this is a little bit different. So now we have a loop component that we can stick where we would like to on the whiteboard. And once that's inserted, then we can drag it and move it around a little bit more freely. At the time of recording, loop components cannot be inserted into Word, but we can still paste those loop component links and then you can access the loop page by selecting the link. Loop components are also available within Microsoft Copilot. So here I will ask Copilot to help me draft a meeting agenda for a post launch review. We will see that it is working on pulling that together. Now at the bottom here, I have some references. I always recommend checking your references. And once you know that it's accurate, then we can go to this edit in pages. Now this is going to create a loop page. So now similar to what we had at the beginning, I can tag Mike and now I can get him to help me with the agenda. And he's going to once again, receive an email notification that I have tagged him and we can collaborate in real time. If you wanted to share this loop page as a component with others, then we can simply select the share icon, copy the component, and then paste it in your favorite 365 app. Now, a huge part of seamless collaboration is also seamless task management. So within loop, we can press forward slash. Now, if you have a plan within planner, then you can select planner and you can select that plan to embed it into your Microsoft loop page or your loop component. However, you decide that you want to share this and collaborate with your team. Alternatively, we can press forward slash and then go task list. Now this is going to insert a to do list and we can start to allocate our modules for the dog training app. And here I will just start to search Mike and then I will assign that task to him as well as a due date. And the great thing about task lists is that they sync with planner and to do. So here we are within the planner app in Microsoft Teams for Mike. And we will see in the activity feed that he has received a notification that I have assigned him a task and that will take him directly to that task item. And we can see that that is showing under my tasks and the assigned to me. And then on this due date, the task will also appear in Mike's my day. Now for Mike to get back to this plan, he can select the plan name at the top and he would be able to see all of the tasks that are in that task list. You might be familiar with a task list from Microsoft Teams meeting notes. And you will see that when we add those notes, we are actually adding a loop component to these meetings. And at the bottom here, we have follow up tasks, which are a task list. I have done a whole other tutorial on how to effectively use Microsoft Teams meeting notes, and I will include that link in the description below. Now with any of these task lists, whether it be within a loop page or within a Teams meeting notes, I always recommend adding a task for yourself 
to touch base with the team and follow up for any questions. This way, the task will also appear in your Microsoft Planner and you will be prompted to follow up with the team to see if they are missing anything to complete any of their tasks. Moving along for seamless collaboration with all of our loop components, we want to ensure that we can search for them. So when we search for a loop component, we are looking at the name of the loop component at the top here. And in some cases, this will inherit the subject of an email, for example. But in other cases, like we used here, we had to enter a title into this loop component and then the name updated accordingly. So we just want to ensure that we are giving our loop components a descriptive name. So now we can use that name to search for our loop components, either in the search bar within Microsoft Teams, SharePoint, or in OneDrive. If we press enter, then we will see that there is that dot loop. So this is that loop component. And if we open it up, then we'll be redirected to Microsoft Loop app, or we can view that loop component or loop page. For more tips on using Microsoft Loop, then you can check out my playlist here or this recommended video by YouTube.